Electric cars have emerged as a transformative force in the automotive industry, ushering in a new era of sustainable transportation. The demand for electric vehicles is expected to keep increasing in the future. As we know, the lithium battery plays the central to the success and widespread adoption of EVs. But recently Ford CEO Jim Farley said that the battery supply chains could hinder the EV development. So how is it hindering the process? Welcome to Evolutionary. Today, we are going to dive deeper on how crucial the battery for the EV industry is and what challenges it faces in this video. Batteries is key. We can spot electric cars everywhere now. Even companies like Ford are investing hundreds of billions of dollars in electric cars. Imagine that huge amount of money. However, as the sector moves toward zero carbon emissions, battery supply chains could hinder those goals. But the question is how? Let's hear first what Ford CEO Jim Farley says about this matter in an interview with Yahoo Finance Live. First of all, batteries are the constraint here. It won't be the manufacturing site behind me. Uh, and, and, and the lithium ion batteries that we use, um, both lithium and nickel are really the key constraining commodities. We normally get those from all over the world, from South America to Africa to Indonesia and Southeast Asia. We want to localize that here in North America, not just the mining, but the processing the materials. Farley pointed out that even raw metals mined in the United States are frequently transported back to China for processing, which the United States is actively attempting to fight with grants and further expenditures. The big change is going to be bringing all of that processing and mining capability back to the United States, Farley continued. It will be a huge job, just like it has been for semiconductors. According to the International Energy Agency, electric vehicles will account for around 10% of all vehicle sales globally by 2021. Bloomberg NIF predicts that by 2030, half of all automobile sales in the United States will be EVs, fueled by Inflation Reduction Act tax incentives. As demand for electric vehicles and trucks grows, and there will need to be an estimated 300 million electric cars on the road by 2030 to meet benchmark net zero targets, so will demand for the valuable minerals used in batteries. As a result, the global supply chains that harvest and process minerals may be put to the test. The United States has identified five minerals that it considers critical to the EV transition and whose supply chains are jeopardized. Lithium, cobalt, manganese, nickel, and graphite. Already, lawmakers and the mining industry have expressed concern over mineral supply. Insufficient supply. There's going to be a real crunch to get the material, Piedmont Lithium CEO Keith Phillips said about lithium mining. Lithium is an important component in lithium ion batteries, the most common form of battery used in the EV sector and the type used by Ford. The average electric car battery consumes between 8 kilograms and 10 kilograms of it. We don't have enough resources in the world to turn that much production by 2035, Phillips added. Notably, demand for lithium-ion batteries is predicted to increase by more than 500 percent between 2020 and 2030. Although the United States has established some capacity for battery manufacture, China leads the industry, accounting for more than 70 percent of global EV battery production capacity. China is the world's largest producer of graphite, a vital mineral used in lithium-ion batteries, but its greatest strength is its refining capability. Once a raw material is mined from the soil, it is sent to processors to be purified before being sent to manufacturers, who make the batteries that go into consumers' cars. Raw materials can travel up to 50,000 kilometers before arriving at a battery manufacturing plant. However, as geopolitics, weather extremes, and soaring commodity costs threaten those supply chains, several American automakers are working hard to shore up their own networks. China is the powerhouse. We just talk about how China leads the battery industry, with China's production of 70% of the world's electric vehicles. Chinese automakers have been experiencing a boom as the country's middle class has grown, with BYD emerging as the country's best-selling company. Ford's sales in China have been steadily dropping since 2016, with Farley stating earlier this year that the company would need to rethink what its brand represented in China. At the conference, Farley was unequivocal about China's rise. As far as China is concerned, it's going to be really humbling, he said. 
The Chinese are going to be a powerhouse, he said. Even with a distinct brand, beating Chinese automakers on cost is difficult when their scale is five times larger than yours, Farley added. BYD's scale is now much larger than Tesla's. BYD created a critical technology, which is a better battery you can find. We see the Chinese as our primary competitor, not GM or Toyota, he explained. In the midst of the US-China big tech hostilities, Ford's ambitions to partner with Chinese supplier Contemporary Amperex Technology Co. Limited, or known as CATL, the world's largest lithium-ion battery producer, have caused some consternation in the US government. Future Plan The new battery plant, which will cost $3.5 billion, is set to open in Michigan in 2026. It will manufacture lithium phosphate batteries rather than the more expensive nickel cobalt batteries. Republican Senator Marco Rubio sponsored legislation in March that would prohibit tax subsidies for EV batteries built with Chinese technology. He also asked that the Biden administration look into Ford's agreement to employ CATL technology. Ford plans to produce 600,000 electric vehicles per year by late 2023 and more than 2 million by the end of 2026. Ford has announced that CATL will offer entire LFP battery packs for Mustang Mach-E models in North America beginning later this year and for F-150 Lightnings beginning in early 2024. Winners in the Supply Chain Ford's goal of producing 2 million EVs per year by 2026 will necessitate a substantial amount of materials critical to battery production. It recently struck four arrangements to ensure lithium supplies, including a long-term agreement with Namaska Lithium for about 13,000 tons of lithium hydroxide over an 11-year period. The agreement is likely to provide Ford customers with tax benefits under the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act. There will be winners and losers in the supply chain, stated Farley at the meeting. Lithium is critical. You have to have the best product strategy. But if you don't control the supply chain, you won't win. He remarked of Ford's ESG plan, it's a very complicated supply chain. It will be difficult to declare. Hand on heart, we're good. But I believe we have as excellent a procedure as anyone in the industry, but it will require physical oversight. He went on to say that Ford was one of the first firms to develop a sustainability policy, and that as a family-owned business, having a strong ESG strategy and ensuring best practices were implemented was the right thing to do. With the development of electric vehicles, it is inevitable that the need for batteries will also increase. But did you know that there are other battery alternatives such as solid-state batteries? Is it better and has potential for the EV world? Check out our video that will explain further about how this battery could change the EV's industry.